is Mission Control Houston, and we want to welcome you to today's Space Station Live. It is Monday, May 6, 2013. This is a live view inside the flight control room for the International Space Station. Today, the flight director who's in charge of this team is Ed Van Sice. He is sitting at the center console. Sitting beside him is Serena Anand. She is today's Capcom and will be the voice uh, up to the crew of Expedition 35 on board the orbiting complex. The crew's had a very busy day today. Chris Hadfield, Roman Romanenko, and Tom Marshburn, who are on the right-hand side of the screen there, getting ready to land back on Earth coming up in the middle of May. They had a drill this morning uh, for their upcoming Soyuz landing. They're going to be traveling back home in the Soyuz 33. That is the uh, vehicle that brought them up to the station uh, back almost five months ago, back in December of 2012. They spent about two hours practicing the steps that they will take coming up here in uh, just a few days as they get ready to come back to Earth and make sure that everything is uh, all smooth and ready to go for that. They also did a leak check on their Sokol launch and entry suits. Everything checked out uh, according uh, to plan in terms of that activity as well. Their landing is coming up on May 13th uh, here in the United States. They're going to be landing in the southern zone of Kazakhstan. That's a little bit different than uh, the typical northern zone, uh, but their landing is going to take place at 9.31 p.m. Central Time that you see there at the bottom of the screen. There's an entire uh, list of activities taking place around that landing. We're going to have several different broadcasts that day on May 13th, beginning at 2.30 p.m. Central Time with hatch closure coverage as the crews say farewell to one another. The hatches will be closed uh, about 20 minutes after that, and then our undocking coverage will begin at 5.45 p.m. Central Time with the actual undocking taking place at 6.08, and then our landing coverage will begin at 8.15 p.m. Central Time with landing again at 9.31 p.m. Central Time with our live coverage of that activity as this uh, crew comes home after five months up on board the International Space Station. Chris Hadfield also working on an experiment today called Spinal Ultrasound. Uh, this has been taking place during this expedition and also previous ones. It's important because the crew members actually get a little bit taller while they're up in space and uh, there's no gravity pulling down on your muscles and bones. So to take a look at exactly uh, what causes that and uh, exactly how that happens, the crews actually use an ultrasound, a small portable ultrasound like what you find here on Earth uh, to take a look at their backs and their spines to see how they're uh, extending and behaving up in space. Uh, that not only has impacts to future crews as uh, flight doctors and surgeons here on the ground better understand that phenomena, uh, but it also actually has impacts here on Earth as well because when MRIs needed to be, uh, need to be done here on Earth, that obviously anybody who's ever had that done takes a very large machine that can't always take place, especially out in remote areas, but this technology by using this small ultrasound uh, portable device up on board the International Space Station could actually lead to smaller, more portable uh, devices for scanning here on Earth. While Hadfield is working on that, Pavel Vinogradov is working on uh, unloading some cargo from the Progress 51, which is currently docked on the back end of the Zvezda service module you see there on the right-hand side of the screen. Mazurkin, Alexander Mazurkin, is also going to be helping him on that activity. Later on this afternoon, Pavel Vinogradov will work on a Russian experiment called Uragon. Uh, this is a crew Earth observation uh, activity back in the Russian segment. They take pictures of the planet below, taking a look at different uh, man-made and natural uh, phenomena down on the ground, help study the Earth to see how it's changing. Chris Cassidy is busy today working on what's called BCAT-6. This stands for Binary Colloidal Alloy Test, a very long and fancy title, but uh, it looks at how uh, gases and liquids come together and separate uh, up in space. It's a little bit different than what happens here on the ground, but by looking uh, at the underlying physics of fluids and how they behave and how they separate, it could actually enable the development of uh, less expensive and longer shelf life for uh, household products, foods, and medicines. That experiment was actually launched back on Space Shuttle Discovery's final mission, STS-133, back in the beginning part of two, uh, 2011. It is run by Procter & Gamble and uh, Harvard University. Those are the two principal investigators of BCAT-6. Later today, Cassidy is going to be watching a training video on some upcoming Robonaut activities, getting familiar with uh, what's going to be taking place with that. Also, some other robotic activities taking place right now on the outside of the space station. You see the Dexter robot there in the center of the screen on the left-hand side uh, is also what uh, is known as the Robotic Refueling Mission, or RRM. 
This is a large washing machine sized box that's about 550 pounds. It measures 33 by 43 by 45 inches. It has all kinds of different tools and uh, other mechanical objects on the outside of it. What it does is take a look at how in the future some sort of uh, automatic robotic spacecraft could fly up to uh, the satellites that are way far out there in space, about 22,000 miles out in space, and could service them because as of right now, all those satellites that are up there are limited by uh, basically how much fuel is on board because once the fuel runs out, that's it. Also, if they break down, there's really no way to service them. So the team that uh, helped come up with the tools and the uh, method for how the Hubble Space Telescope was serviced throughout several different missions has uh, invented this uh, testing platform for the station's robotic arm with Dexter attached on the end to go out there on the station's uh, starboard truss on the right-hand side, that is the home of RRM, and test out all different sorts of things like refueling, uh, cutting some wires, and some other activities. But this activity that's been going on for the past several days and will continue this week uh, takes a look at how uh, the RRM can actually remove some Kapton tape uh, open up some what's called MLI. This is multi-layer insulation, which is basically what covers all kinds of satellites and spacecraft. And to uh, cut some wires and then close up the MLI, which those are uh, obviously some very important tactics that would be needed, needed in the future uh, as uh, some sort of uh, vehicle moved up and would service these satellites. So this RRM, which again is on the starboard truss, the right-hand side of the International Space Station, will take place being run by ground controllers here on Earth. And, of course, the crew is monitoring the progress. If you would like to learn more about RRM or any of the other experiments that the crew is working on today and this week, we obviously invite you to log on to nasa.gov station.